Hey guys, how's it going? It's Vicious. Uh, trying to compose myself here. I feel so funny holding a uh, a microphone in my hand. But uh, check it out. What I have in my hand here is the uh, Shure SM58. I finally got it. Um, I might, if you caught one of my past videos, I told you that I ordered two of these off of eBay. And when I got them, I found out that they were actually counterfeit. And I did get my money back for that, but it was still a pain in the butt. Uh, but I checked this one out when it came in. It came in yesterday, and I didn't, I didn't even get to come home. I was stuck at work for 24 hours. But uh checked it out as soon as I got home today, opened up my package, and it's authentic. Yay! So um, I'm not going to use this for my podcasting or video logging normally. I'm just using it today to show it to you and also test it out. Uh, but this is the microphone that I bought for just one purpose, and that's for when I do the media coverage for MetroCon. I'm going to actually try to go around on the floor and interview people, and obviously... Having a microphone like this is ideal for that. Uh, you talk into it and be like, and let the other person talk into it. Now the uh, SM58 is a really well-known microphone. It is a dynamic microphone, so it doesn't need phantom power, and it's directional, which is going to be really good for when I'm on the floor at an event. I don't want an omnidirectional microphone that picks up sound from everywhere. Uh, you'll see if you point it away, the sound of it will roll off it's very directional so that way you can eliminate noise around you and only pick up the voice which is what's really important so uh, I got it plugged into the mixer right now I bought a cable <laughs> this is what I had planned on doing was uh, using this cable to plug it into my um, zoom h2n a right angle 3.5 millimeter connector and then uh, XLR on the other side but the thing is I screwed up this is the <laughs> this is a male XLR connector and I needed the one with a female connector on it so I, I screwed up on that. I like the length though it's five foot so I got the right length so I just had to put an order in for um, a coupler so I can change the gender on that and make that work but I'm pretty excited about it. It's nice and hefty. It feels good in the hand. Uh, it sucks that I had to invest money into something I probably only use once a year and that's if I get to go to Metricon every year but it was really important to me so I went ahead and did it. So I figured I would get up on video today and actually talk to you guys a little bit about microphones. Having the SM58 in my hand uh, made me realize that, hey, this would be a really good kind of a video log for everybody to talk about microphone concepts and maybe teach you something. If you're into making YouTube videos, doing commentary, uh, voice acting for machinima stuff or whatever, you might, you're going you're gonna to have to use a microphone to do that kind of stuff. And a lot of people uh, will commonly asked questions like what's a good microphone to get and this and that and the other or wh how do I remove noise from my recordings for post-processing purposes so people are kinda quick to ask the common sense questions but they don't know there's actually a lot more to it than that this is there's a microphone technique I guess you'd call it or I should just call it a concept and that concept is called signal to noise ratio. Today I'm going to give you guys kind of a little rundown on microphone signal to noise ratio. Basically, signal to noise ratio is king when it comes to microphone quality. Not how expensive the microphone in your hand is or on your desk or wherever. Not your recording environment. It's all about signal to noise ratio. Let me break that down. Signal is what you want to record. Right now, my voice is the signal. Noise is everything you do not want to hear air conditioner that's on right now my computer running in the background all that's the noise signal to noise ratio is how loud your signal is versus your noise basically you want to make sure that your signal is loud enough that you don't hear the noise makes a lot of sense right so to get the best quality recordings possible you want the highest signal to noise ratio possible how do you do that it doesn't mean buy a more expensive microphone it means use the microphones properly to get a better signal to noise ratio that means either get a better signal quality amplitude volume or get a lower noise quality and the two ways you accomplish this mostly is a getting the microphone closer will increase your signal strength if you have a shotgun microphone i see they're really popular now people buying the uh, shotgun mics and mounting them onto the dslrs but they're keeping that microphone far away that is not really a good technique because yes you have a nice high, high quality expensive microphone but because it's so far away you're not really increasing the signal and that microphone is not going to perform very well and the other way is to reduce noise other than being in a recording studio or somewhere like that where everything is optimized to prevent noise around you the best way to prevent noise and lower that down is to use a directional microphone like I have right now so 
instead of having an omnidirectional microphone, which obviously would pick up every noise in this room right now, having this directional microphone right now is going to help reduce the noise and therefore give me a better signal to noise ratio. Now, if you get a good signal to noise ratio and you take that into post processing, then you can work on it some and really cut out all the background noise, especially constant noises like fans and air conditioners and stuff like that. They're pretty easy to fix in post processing. But if you start with a crappy recording from the get go by not having your gain set right and having all these other things set right, then post processing can't fix your problem. You're going to have to do it all over again. Uh, let me see. Next thing to touch on is preamps and stuff. Don't go and buy the most expensive microphone for your camcorder or your DSLR thinking that is going to fix your problem even if you manage to use the microphone correctly and get it close to you uh, because the preamps inside of those devices are usually pretty cheap. So I highly recommend that you get an external recorder like I use the Zoom H2n. You can get a much cheaper one, the Zoom H1. Those are made for audio recording and they have a higher quality preamp to them therefore having a lower noise floor and that noise floor is part of your signal to noise ratio so if that makes sense to you I'm doing this all on the whim by the way this was not a planned uh, video log today so I don't have any kind of script work out I'm just kind of going with it as I go but I did want to explain the concept of signal to noise ratio to you guys and uh, go over the benefits of having a directional microphone I want to talk about those shotgun mics a little bit more uh, the shotgun microphones generally speaking are very directional pattern that they pick up sound. It goes straight out and it's a very narrow pickup pattern. So with their focus, people are tending to use these by pointing them at themselves from their camera like I told you about a minute ago. And that's bad for signal to noise, one, because it's not close, but two, because it actually picks up the sound behind you. Your stuff in your room or your voice itself is bouncing off of the wall and then coming back into that shotgun microphone. The proper way to really use a shotgun microphone is to have it up above facing downward towards you because then it picks up your voice and it's picking up the floor and the floor doesn't really have any noise bouncing off of it. Unless you have like a, a tile floor, wood floor, then you might have a little bit of a problem with echo. But if you have a carpet like I do, that'll work really well for you. Getting it close and getting it up above is going to really make those shotgun microphones work really good. But actually, most people will tell you if they're pro in the audio, don't use the shotgun microphones inside anyways. They use super cardioid pickup patterns, not the telephoto, you know, long range sniper microphones. <laughs> so uh, when you're doing podcasts and stuff, cardioid is best. The, uh, the Blue Yeti Pro that I have next to me that I do all my desktop recording stuff with, that's a cardioid pattern. Well, it actually does stereo, omnidirectional, cardioid, and a bunch of other stuff, but I always leave it on cardioid for doing any voice work because it picks up sound coming from the front of it and it tries to block out any sound coming from the back of it, reducing noise from the background, giving me a better signal to noise ratio. I also, I guess you can see it, I can barely see if it's in frame, I have it on a, a microphone stand so that way I can get it close to me. I'll tell all the, uh, Blue Yeti users or owners out there, go spend $20 and get yourself a cheap as hell microphone stand and get it off of your desk. Um, one of the biggest things about that, it's a condenser microphone and it picks up vibration so easy. The included mount that it comes with doesn't have any shock absorption. So if you tap your desk, you knock into it, you're typing on your keyboard, whatever you're doing, it's going to pick it up and go right to the microphone and be very very noticeable. If you get it off of your desk and you have it on a microphone stand, then you isolate it. So you don't have to go spend $200 on an expensive shock mount and then put the shock mount on your desk. Spend $20, get a microphone stand, and put that on the floor. That's what I did. It was a smarter way to do it. And also, I have it going horizontal now. And since I have a triple monitor set up, uh, basically, I don't have. If I would have had the shock mount coming from above, it would have blocked my view of my monitors. Or if I had it on the side of my desk, it would have blocked the view of my other monitors on the side. Coming in horizontally, I put it just under eye level of the monitor so I can see my full monitor, and just over where my keyboard is so I can see my keyboard as well. So it actually works out really well, and uh, I can. I don't have to see my keyboard type either, so I don't. I don't really care if it covers the keyboard up. So I think, I think that's a good way to start this video log off. 
rather than rambling on much longer, I'll just let you guys kind of ask some questions. If you have some questions about microphone concepts like the uh, vocal pickup patterns, the difference between a dynamic microphone and a condenser microphone, recommendations for what microphone to get, uh, you know, things like that, come up with some questions for me and I'll sit there and type up the answers on YouTube. And I'm just testing out the SM58. I've got my workhorse microphone here and I like it. It's heavy, it's heavier than it looks, but it's kind of cool. And um, so this is Vicious and I'll see you guys later.